Hey, people. Guess what? Hmm. A lot of Americans don't understand why we're in Iraq. A lot of you people see this is going nowhere. And this is all because of the media. There's a Democrat who's president right now. Every little success story in the Middle East would be trumpeted. Never-ending praise from every frequency and every channel all the time. Even MTV 24-7. Uncle Sam wants you for the U.S. Army. Shit like that. And people would be standing in line. All of you people would be so gratified that only 3,700 American lives have been lost as of this date, uh, October 3rd, 2007. And it would be made clear to all you viewers of CNN and uh, CBS and Katie Couric um, uh, that a brilliant strategy was being put into play. And even, even Keith Olbermann would be kissing the ass of David Petraeus just as soon as he could get Chris Matthews' face out of there. Um, and in all that any of us would be able to hear and see was how great the war was going and how few lives we have lost and that those lives were totally worth it for the security and the safety that we have here in the USA at this moment, on this day, due to the fact that we're over there fighting them terrorists so we don't have to fight them over here. You know, I, I know everybody's tired of that cornball argument, right? But if the media refer to something like this, uh, we're executing a fish in a barrel type strategy. With a rat, it's the barrel, and the enemy is the fish, and the U.S. servicemen doing the shooting, straight into the barrel, shooting all the fish. And that would be their storyline. You know, young men, young men in the Arab slash Islamic world are showing up in Iraq to fight the Americans, to break us down. And that Iraq is their obstacle to coming here. Because we're over there. They're looking to go there too. To see some action. And this allows us to tighten up security here. So there's fewer incidents of terrorism here. And the less potential for them to carry out the acts here in the United States. All those people here who are opposed to this war would be in favor of the war. So you, you, you right there, yes you, opposed to the war. You'd be sitting in some restaurant coffee shop and bar and not in your head in reassuring agreement that if brave, courageous, selfless, patriotic soldiers, sailors, air force, airmen and marines were not over there, the terrorists would be over here. And you would not be able to sit there so safe and sound as you are able to do so now. And there would be no disagreement about that fact. Nobody like John Kerry would be running around comparing this war to the Vietnam War. Uh, everything that is now regarded as disastrous and quagmire-ish would be regarded as fantastic and smooth running and going swimmingly well because the media always spins the issue in a direction which favors the Democrats 
And you know it's true. The mediocre supports that fact that the U.S. will never leave Iraq. Never. Ever. Get used to it. We still have troops in Germany. We still have troops in Japan. And England. And Spain. And Italy. You just wait and see. So you can take your hopes that the U.S. will withdraw from Iraq and relocate. Yeah, that's what they call it. That's what Mirtha and other congressmen uh, like to call it. Yes, a redeployment. Yes. That's not going to happen. Even if a Democrat becomes president next year, because all you little idiots and suckers go and vote for Hillary. Or, God forbid, Obama. Or, even worse, John Edwards. Jesus, please, no. So, all you little peace-loving, junior hippie dope-smoking, vegan, dumbass Democrats can snuff out those hopes like you snuff out a nasty cigarette butt in the middle of a, a nasty ashtray filled up with other nasty cigarette butts. The United States will not ever leave Iraq any sooner than we will ever leave Saudi Arabia or Turkey or Greece or Cyprus or Afghanistan. It's not going to happen. Never. Never, ever.